Hi, this is Nara Bonafidi with Good Faith Ministries. Welcome to my podcast, I Was Made for This, where we will be talking about identity, things like finding your real purpose, and how God has an awesome plan for your life. Discovering who you really are, what you were made for, and becoming who God has created you to be is true freedom. So I invite you to join me as we explore and talk about God's goodness, His unique plan for each of us, and how we can experience victory in our lives. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. I am so excited about today's podcast. It's titled, Are You Planted? And I I got this uh, from reading Psalm 92, verses 12 through 15. And for those of you that aren't driving or aren't aren't out jogging or whatever, if you have your Bibles, you can turn there with me. Psalm 92, starting with verse 12. And again, I'm so excited about this because sometimes, you know, you you can read a scripture and things will just jump out at you and it will just minister to you. And that's what this one did. And... Let's just jump right in. I'm going to just dissect this. We're going to go line by line and word by word. And I I believe that it's going to bless you like it did me. Okay? So Psalm 92, starting with verse 12, says this. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming, the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. That is a power-packed verse, and we're just going to take it line by line, and I just want to kind of share with you what the Lord showed me about this. First of all, it says, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. Okay, who are the righteous? Well, that's you. That's me. That's us. If you are a Christian, then you're righteous. Now, I know that may sound strange to some people, but it's not because of what you do or don't do, okay? And it's not a self-righteous thing. It's because of Jesus' blood. We're covered in his blood, and that's what makes us righteous. It has nothing to do with what we can, what we can do, or or within ourselves to become righteous. And I want to share this with you. Uh, In 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says this, He made the one who did not know sin, which is Jesus, to be sin on our behalf in order that we could become the righteousness of God in Him. Now, I can't go into a full righteousness teaching right now, but in case you have any doubt or questions about how we can be called the righteousness of God, there's some really good messages out there. There's some books and some teachings and so forth on this subject, and I've I've dug into that myself, and if you want to contact me either through email or my Facebook page, I can get those references to you, Okay. But for now, I just want to concentrate on this one scripture. But I want to give you a little background. It's important to know who you are in him. Now, I realize this scripture, Psalm 92, was taken from the Old Testament. But it's still talking about us, God's people. So I just want to make that clear since there's a lot of people that get hung up on whether they're righteous or not. I was just talking to someone the other day, and they were talking about how bad they felt about something or another, and I could tell they did not have a revelation on the righteousness of God and how that pertains to them. So the righteous, the righteous, the righteous. When it says the very first, the first two words in this scripture, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. That's us. Hallelujah. Okay. So, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. What does flourish mean? Flourish means to be in highest productivity, in highest excellence or influence, to thrive. You know, if you're flourishing, then you're being productive. 
Have you ever felt that you weren't having a productive day, week, or even year? I have. Well, one of the ways we can get in on the productive anointing is to meditate on this verse right here. Decree and declare that I am righteous because of Jesus. I am in right standing with God. Just let that soak in for a minute. So if I'm in right standing with God, I have it within me to be productive, and that productivity produces fruit and increase in my life. Wow, that just ministered to me. I like that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make this one of my declarations this week. I'm going to meditate on it. Okay, so that's what flourish is. So the next part of that verse says, flourish like a palm tree. Okay, I know what a palm tree is, but what were they talking about? Flourish like a palm tree. What's the significance of a palm tree? Well, I did a little research on the palm tree. It's constantly green. It's large. It has wide branches, which actually provided shade to the travelers in that day and time. It produces dates. I really like dates, and it's a sweet, luscious fruit, and others could enjoy that. So it was a producing tree. It was a beautiful tree, or is a beautiful tree. Palm trees are beautiful. And it was treasured by people back then because the countries they lived in were hot and they really took advantage of the shade that it produced and the fruit. So if you're righteous, then you will flourish. You'll be at your highest productivity, excellence, and influence. You'll thrive. You'll be like the palm tree, which is constantly green. You know, if a plant's green, that means that it's getting the proper nutrients to, to thrive. You'll provide something good to others, like shade or comfort. In other words, you'll meet a need simply by being who God created you to be. You are created for such a time as this. You knew I was going to say that, didn't you? I always do. You'll produce sweet fruit for others to enjoy. Mm, that's what a palm tree does. And that's what the, the word says. It says, we'll flourish like a palm tree. There will be people who will enjoy just being around you because of who you are and what you provide for them, which will help them grow stronger also. Mm, that's good. You know, this, this really spoke to me because there's a lot of people who need comfort these days. Wouldn't you agree? A lot of hurting people. Well, if you're like the palm tree, you'll have it within you to comfort others, even if you need comforting yourself. I'm telling you, I've had this happen in my own life. There were times where I could have used some encouragement. Mm, I remember some of those times. Then there were some. There was someone around me that I just felt led to go to that needed that same thing. And because of what has been planted, which is the word of God on the inside of me, I was able to provide encouragement and comfort, the very thing that I needed. And as a result, I received that same thing. Isn't that beautiful? That is, one of, that is just how God works. Mm, hallelujah. Okay, the next part of that, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Okay. I grew up on a ranch where there were lots and lots of cedar trees. I don't know if it's the same kind of cedar that they're talking about here, but I have some experience with cedar trees. As a matter of fact, our home was built on a hill. And we called it Cedar Hill because of all the cedar trees. Well, in ancient times, cedar wood was very desirable. It had an aromatic quality. Plus, get this, it was resistant to decay and bugs. Selah. Think about that. 
it says, we will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. And the cedar wood is resistant to decay and bugs. Okay, keep that, keep that in the back of your mind. Cedar is mentioned throughout the Old Testament as an item of luxury and wealth. Also, the cedars of Lebanon were a gift from God and a source of wealth for Lebanon. So, here's what I got out of this. You could say that the righteous person, which is us, the believer, who puts God's word and his will first in their lives, hmm, will be aromatic, will be resistant to the decay that is in the world, and the bugs or evil natural and spiritual pest that would try to destroy you, that would try to destroy us. Hmm. I'm telling you, I could meditate on this verse for a long time. There's a built-in resistance to spiritual decay if we're growing like a cedar of Lebanon. Now, this tree's wood, get this, is solid. It's a hard, solid wood. It's durable and in some ways, incorruptible. Hmm, who is the incorruptible seed and who lives on the inside of us? Wow, I can hear some of your wheels turning right now. I can hear your minds click, 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 just thinking about that. And let that sink in for a minute. So does that mean we can be solid? We can be durable and incorruptible? We are, right? Because we are the righteousness of God. Something to think about. I hope y'all are getting excited about this like I did. There's so much to this. The next, uh, next part of that verse says, um, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. Okay. For us today, that's talking about being planted in the body of believers, right? And in today's world, that would mean a local body such as a church. You've heard the phrase, bloom where you're planted. Well, if you're not blooming, maybe you're not planted. Just saying. I've got a lot more I want to say about the planting, but I'm not going to get into it right now because i got more I want to talk about on this verse. But it's very, very important. I know most of you know this, but... Um, there's a lot of people that think that church is not important for today. They don't need to attend a church. Anyway, I've got a lot to say about that at a later date. But that's what this, this means here, to be planted in the house of the Lord. Okay, the next part of this, the righteous will still bear fruit in old age. So I have a question for you. What fruit, if any, will you bear in your old age? When I was reading this and just meditating on, on this script, on this verse, I, I thought of this. You know, you've heard of a crabby old man or a crabby old woman. Well, this made me think of crab apples for some reason. That's just how my mind works. You know, they look good. They're called apples. But actually, it's a bitter, sour fruit. I mean, I tasted of one of these when I was a kid. I took it right off the tree, and I vowed never to touch that thing again. <laughs> it was so sour. It looked like an apple, but it didn't taste like one. You know, I think that's kind of like the fruit of some people. There's something there, and it may look like fruit, but with a closer look, it's not a real apple. It poses as a delicious apple, but it's really not pleasant to eat. Then there's some people who don't bear any fruit at all. They're not planted in the right stream. And as a result, they're non-productive. But if you're planted in the house of the Lord, you should be producing good fruit. Amen? You agree with that? Okay, the next part of that scripture says, they will stay fresh and green. So let's just go over this. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. We've already went over what flourish and palm tree is about. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still 
bear fruit in old age. We're not going to be crabby. And they will stay fresh and green. Mm. What I got out of this is I was just meditating on this. As you are rooted and grounded in love, you'll always be alive. There's that abundant life just exuding from you. If a plant or a tree is fresh and green, it means that it's getting the the proper nutrients and water to flourish. So the right elements that give life produces freshness and vibrance. Have you ever known someone who seems to be on fire for God all the time? I know of a few people like that who seem to be that way. They're just unstoppable. I'm thinking of someone right now. (laughs) They're still human and deal with things on this earth, but they seem to just keep going and going and going with the things of God and their assignment on their lives. That really encourages me. I have people that I watch and listen to, and they're examples to me on how to stay fresh and green. And in their natural age, they're not that young but they're, they're staying fresh and green even as they grow older. And it's really not a secret. It, it's simply you have to be planted and staying in your stream. Listen, y'all, I can't wait to share with you about what the Lord revealed to me about streams. I mean, it's just really going off in my spirit, and that's going to be in my next podcast. So stay tuned, okay? So moving right along, they will stay fresh and green, Okay, we, they will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. What does that mean, the Lord is upright? Well, it means this. There is no unrighteousness in God. He's always right. And I, I'm telling you, some of you need to settle that right now. I really feel like I need to say that. He doesn't make mistakes. He is truth. His word is truth. And really, no one should ever blame God for evil things. If there's one thing that I personally, I have to practice patience and walking in love on and about is when someone blames God for things that he had no part in. And I'm usually not silent about it, but I'll pray for wisdom and mercy when I'm dealing with that person. That's all I'm going to say about that. The other, the last part of that, of this verse, the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no wickedness in him. You know, we see leaders fail, fall short, disappoint us, don't we? But no matter what happens with people who say they're following God and they fall into sin, There's absolutely no wickedness in God. Aren't you thankful for that? He's the one. He's the one. We can always, always, always trust. Mm. You know, there's a song that I love to sing. And I I sang it when I was a child even um, in church. And it's called, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. And it goes like this. I, I looked up the lyrics because I couldn't remember them all. And if I, could, if I could sing well, I'd sing it for you, but I can't. So I'm just going to read the lyrics. It says, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, and to know, thus saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood. And in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing, cleansing blood. Yes, to sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease. Just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. I'm so glad I learned to trust thee, 
precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know thou art with me. You will be with me to the end. That song still speaks to me and warms my heart. I hope it did you. And remember, remember this. I, I hope you got something out of this today. Psalm 92, 12 through 15. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming, The Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. I just want you to remember this. You are like that tree planted in the house of the Lord. You are. You're strong, aromatic, producing fruit. You supply a need to others around you, all the while remaining beautiful, vibrant, and green. That's what the Word of God says about us. That's what the Word of God says about you. So let's receive that today. Let's receive that promise, and let's walk in it. Amen. Well, I don't know about you, but this really encouraged me. God is so good in His Word. His Word is health to our flesh. So let that verse minister to you today. God bless you.